Hey there, everybody in internet land. Dave Adams here with Budget Audio File. And we're once again in the podcast setup because we have another home theater review for you. I'm just going to do it with this microphone, though, because the other one's way over there. And I rarely use this one. I like this one. <laughs> and the movie we're reviewing today is Pulse. It's a 2006 horror movie that is as bad as it sounds. Even though it says right there, scariest movie of the year. Maybe they meant the acting, I don't know. But again, just to quickly sidetrack, these are not intended to be movie reviews. We're not gonna go into like plot synopsis and storyline, character arcs and things like that. I'll touch on them briefly, but this isn't a movie review. There are plenty of channels that do movie reviews. This isn't one of them. What we look at is how good does this movie sound in your theater and how good does it look on your projector or TV? So what is Pulse anyway? Well, I know I said I wouldn't get too much into the movie, but I'll give you a brief overview. The main character played by Kristen Bell loses her boyfriend to some weird freak suicide accident thing. And it turns out it was caused by some weird demon entity thing that was unlocked when they hacked into some sort of system trying to uncover some wideband frequencies across the internet and radio waves. And yes, the movie does play out as stupidly as I just described it. So now they're on a mission to stop this weird entity thing from killing everyone by uploading a virus directly to it. So let's talk about the visuals first off because I want to get those out of the way before we talk about the meat and potatoes of this movie which is the soundtrack, notably the bass. Visually speaking, this movie is very 2006. That is, the CG kind of looks CG and there's a lot of gimmicky things that almost make you feel like it was supposed to be a 3D movie but at the last minute they could couldn't afford it. So some of the graphics come across as cheesy, some of the visuals come across as a bit jarring for what they're supposed to be, which is spooky and haunting and chilling. They come across as just kind of laughable at times, but that is of the time of 2006. There were very few movies that did CG really well in 2006, namely with horror movies. That said, it really isn't that bad. There are some spooky, chilling, and downright disturbing scenes, if that's what you're into. And the bruising slash blackening of the skin effect that they do actually comes across really well. And that's surprising because when watching it on a 125 inch screen, you would expect that a lot of those flaws would come to light. But I'm guessing the blue filter they put over everything for the entirety of the movie helps to cover some of that up. So all of that out of the way, I do want to talk about how the movie movie kind of wraps up the last 25 to 30 minutes or so and the CG at that point just kind of derails and goes completely <laughs> completely out of the bucket that is to say it's really bad the fire effects that they use towards the end are very two-dimensional it literally is flat fire on a 3d surface take the worst after effects plug-in you can think of and put it in a movie and that's it. It is the literally the stock default fire effect that you get in After Effects or Final Cut Pro, kind of mirrored into Hollywood. In fact, at the end, and this is not really a spoiler, there are two buildings, they're both on fire, and you can tell that literally the two flames are just perspective shifts in a mirror flip of the other. It's, it's pretty bad, and I'm not the best video editor out there, but I would do a slightly better job than that. I would at least add some depth to the fire and not just use, you know, CG stock footage number one for fire and CG stock footage number 12 for smoke. Also, at the very end, and I laugh at this, there is a helicopter scene where the helicopter flies over the audience and over the main characters, and it is such a CG helicopter. This isn't like a helicopter that was then, you know, artificially enhanced in After Effects. This was a complete, like, blender <laughs> helicopter. And it just, it looks so bad. It's so bad because the lighting is all wrong on it. It's lit from all the wrong angles from for where the camera should be versus the lighting that's coming from the, you know, the atmosphere. It's just, the actual helicopter looks like it's w this well-lit object in a dimly lit area. And it, and it just shouldn't look like that. It just looks very wrong for, what's the, for what the director was trying to convey. The graphics team just didn't do their job. It's another one of those things where pretty much everyone who worked on visuals should probably have been fired. But then again, maybe not. Who knows? I mean, maybe they were just working with what they had for the time. That said, I've seen better movies from 2006 that had much better computer-aided graphics. And if I think about it, I've seen better movies from 1996 with better computer-aided graphics, so I, I don't know what to say about that. They just didn't do a good job. Uh, the plot and the acting, uh, cringy. I won't get into it again. This isn't a movie review. This is a home theater review, but 
cringy. So let's jump into the fun part, the real reason why you're watching this. Let's talk about the audio. Um, atmospherically and surround sound wise, this movie does a really good job. Uh, all of the sound comes from where you think it's supposed to come from relative to the actors, relative to where the camera is facing. You know, vocals come directly from the screen unless they're being panned left or right. And you could tell that the audio mixers did a very good job in placing the actors on the sound stage where they belong. So if you have a central character and a character to the left and to the right of them respectively, they aren't just, you know, center, left channel, right channel, they're center and then blended to the left if the camera is not facing directly on them and then blended to the right if the camera once again is not facing directly on them. And then as the camera pans to each person or cuts to each person, you then hear their vocals, their dialogue coming directly from the center channel. It sounds really good. And then like the glass shattering effects, the jump scare effects and things that are supposed to be coming from behind you, footsteps and knocking and creaking and cracking. That all comes from the channels they're supposed to come from. They also sound really good. The person doing the audio mixing knew how to use sound to imply distance and how to imply bigness to a room or emptiness to a room. And they did a really good job at that. You'll notice that a lot of the rooms that are empty sound empty. The empty hallways sound like empty echoey hallways and the closed in tight elevators sound like closed in tight elevators. It sounds like you're in the environment where you're supposed to be. And now let's talk about the bass and you know we're gonna cut down to the theater where we see some of the subwoofers working out. I will say the bass is the bread and butter of this movie. It's the whole reason why I picked it up in the first place. There's this scene in the movie that's been called just the lab scene and it's really good. It's super bass heavy. It's a lot of undulating, pulsating bass, and it just screams at you the entire time. Again, I emphasize the fact that I have a very large theater room. It's my entire basement. So it's 1,200 square feet, and my subwoofers were just pressurizing that room to capacity. In fact, Throughout the movie, there were times where the bass was so deep and so loud that I literally felt it in my sinus cavities. So those of you out there with big subwoofers that do a lot of work and have put out a lot of wattage, you'll definitely get that effect in your theater as well, trust me. So let's go ahead and cut down to the theater. I want you guys to see the speakers moving as this scene plays out. I'll try to also throw in some B-roll where you can see the screen as well, but I don't want to get a copyright claim, so I may not do that. Um, if you're seeing the video play, then you'll know I didn't get a copyright claim, but I want you guys to see these speakers doing their thing because it is absolutely absurd. Hey guys, Dave Adams from the future here. I just want to give a quick update because while I was editing, I noticed something. Basically, all you're going to see are three of my 15s down there. You're not going to see the other three. Yes, I do have six 15s at the back. I also have five 18s up front. Yes, I know 11 subwoofers. It's a crazy, crazy theater, but with 1200 square feet, you need a lot of sound to pressurize all of that. And the reason why I point that out is because we get a lot of new subscribers. Not everyone has seen the setup. And with channels like these, you you tend to get a lot of people that think stuff like that's really cool. I know I think stuff like that is really cool. So before we jump down, just keep in mind, you're going to see three of the 15s. They just happen to be the ones, I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but they just happen to show off the excursion the most. And that's really cool for videos like these. One of these days, I'll put another video out showing a walkthrough of the theater. We'll see the 518s. We'll see the 615s. I think you guys will really like it. So let's just get down to the theater so you can watch these things move around.
as you can see and hear, those speakers are just working back and forth. Those subs are just moving around like it's nobody's business. And it's just absolutely absurd. The bass hits so hard, especially in that scene, but throughout the movie as well, that you really will find a scene that draws you in and just keeps you watching. Just for the bass alone, and I promise that. Seriously, guys and gals, this movie will have no problem shaking your entire theater. Like, honestly, if no one in your house is complaining about the bass, you just need to turn it up some. I know a lot of you watching right now have big, long throw subwoofers, whether they be HS, you know, HSU or SVS or even JTRs, and I know those things are going to just absolutely respond to this movie. If you have good subs, you're going to love this movie. But if you're looking for a movie to watch, I would just go ahead and skip it. This is a demo movie for sure. So you want to show off the subwoofers, you want to show what your new build can do, you want to show how good your amps are, put this movie on, it'll show it all off. But I do have to give the warning, when I say this thing pressurized my sinus cavities, I'm not speaking in hyperbole. I literally felt the bass in my inner ear and under the cheekbones. It's crazy how loud this movie is. But that said, with a well-balanced system, it's not overpowering, it's just very noticeable. And it's a lot of fun because of that. It's like driving a really fast car. You put your foot down, pinch it to the seat, this, th this movie will pin you to the seat of your theater. So with all that out of the way, let's break down the scores and see what we've got going on. Now this is where I talk about my various ratings for the movies. These are just my opinion. You may disagree. That's awesome. If you disagree, comment below. If you agree, comment below. It helps analytics. Each of these is going to be out of a maximum possible of 25 per category for a full potential score of 100 points. We'll then add them all up and give you a full max score, and that'll be our home theater score for this movie. Hopefully, I can do this for many more movies coming up, and I might even go back and redo Cloverfield Paradox so that we can get a home theater score for that one. Visually, this movie is actually pretty decent looking for 2006. I would say if it was updated to 2019 or 2020, it would look a lot better. You would have to scale the budget up, of course, for today's standards, but I think it would actually look really amazing with today's technology. The only thing that I would do, and really the only thing that cuts down on the score, is I would lose a lot of the cheesy gimmicky visuals. You know those things that just aren't needed? Like things jumping at the camera suddenly, or the super predictable jump scares? Just not necessary. Get rid of those, lose that blue tint, maybe give it like a gray backwash or a warmer tone backwash. Do something different. The blue thing is very late 90s, early 2000s, and it's just distracting after a while. So as far as visuals, I'll give it a 20 out of 25. Bass. And this is the major category for this movie. And overall, bass will just get its own category for all movies because I'm a bit of a bass head, and you've seen my theater. I love showing off the subs, I love watching my subs, I love feeling those things work back and forth. So, bass definitely gets its own category in the home theater score. And this movie, boy oh boy, does it have a lot of bass. Seriously, it'll just get behind your eyeballs and start pushing them around if you let it. And it's from the opening credits to the very last word of the end credits. It is that crazy and it's that continuous, it's throughout the actual entirety of the movie from logo to logo and if by the time the end scene comes around if you haven't had enough bass they throw in a plane crash and explosion just for good measure just to really wake up that 10 hertz crowd out there like myself it really is one of those movies where whether you have near field subs or all of your subs are far away from your seats you're going to feel it in your chest in the seat like crazy and bass definitely gets a well-deserved 23 out of 25 not perfect but damn good. Surround effects. Gotta knock a lot of points off of this one because it's in 5.1 only. I normally don't complain about 5.1, but after you really start watching movies in 7.1 or even 7.1 with Atmos, going back down to 5.1, even 5.1 True HD, which sounds really good with that lossless quality, just doesn't cut it anymore, especially with horror movies. You really want to maximize the amount of channels that you're utilizing with horror movies. Horror movies are supposed to be upsetting and chilling and disturbing and terrifying. And when you only have 5.1 channels, that might have been the bee's knees back in 2006. But in 2020, we really like to see more tracks. And I know it's possible. Rocky Horror Picture Show had a Dolby Atmos and a Dolby 7.1 release. They can go back in, remaster a movie, and make it work. That said, this movie gets a 19 out of 25. Finally, this is a category I like to call the it factor. The it factor is that piece de resistance on a movie that keeps you coming back, keeps you watching. 
It's not about whether or not the movie's good, the acting's good, the screenwriting is good, the stage direction is good. It's just something that keeps you watching the movie, or in this case, keeps me watching the movie and makes me want to go back and watch it. It's a cumulative effect. Kind of like, I don't know, uh, Suicide Squad. <laughs> or Independence Day. In and of themselves, those are not very good movies. But they, whether they be guilty pleasure or the sounds or the visuals or a particular chemistry from a character or charisma from a character keeps you coming back, that's what the it factor is. And out of a possible 25, I'd give this movie a 17. I probably won't watch it too many times on my own unless I'm skipping ahead to specific scenes to hear the bass or to hear specific atmospheric effects coming from my speakers. And I'll definitely show this off to my friends going forward. So we add all those numbers up and what do we get? A 79 out of 100, which is what, a C? That's not bad. And that's pretty much how this movie feels. It feels like a solid C movie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. I really hope you like this format, you know, here in the podcast area, uh, just kind of reviewing and chatting about movies. Pulse, once again, it's a 2006 movie. Get the light lighting working for us. This is the uh, Dimension Extreme Edition, unrated. So take with that information what you will. I got it off of Amazon for, I think it was like nine bucks. Do I recommend picking it up? Absolutely. A 79 out of 100? Yeah, pick the movie up. It's not, like I said, it's not the best acting, but it'll really wake up your theater. I think you owe it to yourself as a home theater enthusiast to watch this movie in your theater and to use it to show off to your friends. So once again, let me know if you guys like this kind of format, this kind of, you know, pr presentation, and uh, we'll keep going with it if you do. If not, let me know what you'd like to see change. I really like the home theater score idea, kind of a Doug DeMuro, Doug score type thing that we can apply to a movie. And um, yeah, we'll just keep rocking forward if you guys like it. So anyway, yeah, that's it for this one. If you guys like what you see, click like, click, click subscribe, do all that weird stuff if you want. If not, you don't have to. I would appreciate a subscribe and a share and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Once again, I'm David Adams with the Budget Audio File. We'll see you next time.